Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today we're going to take a look at this really sweet 1994 Buick Roadmaster. Let's get started. So why is it that every mechanic that I know owns either a grandma car or a family four-door, like a Toyota Camry? I have several mechanic friends that work out of Wichita. Some of them are very high level technicians. A couple other own their own shops as well. And what they drive to work is Camrys and Grand Marquis and Roadmasters. And why is that? Why are they not driving Corvettes and Camaros and, or even complicated Porsches or things of that nature? And there's a very good reason for that. We're going to go over it. We're going to check this car out. Some of the strong points of why Magic Mike owns this car. This is his car. We'll go ahead and take a look in the engine bay. We'll put it on the lift and look underneath. Then we'll look around it and check out the interior. And I can show you guys exactly why mechanics own these old frumpy old cars. Let's get the hood open. So you're probably thinking, ooh, under there is probably a Buick 3.8 or some little rinky dinky engine. Wrong. There is an LT1 in this awesome car. Let's take a look. And there it is in all its glory. In these years, some of them had 275 horsepower, some of them were 295 or right at 300 horsepower. And this one, I believe, is around 300. But it is a 5.7 liter LT1 engine that you would find in a Corvette. Now, it would have a different intake manifold and a few other things different, but it basically, it's a Corvette engine in a family car. This thing is extremely easy to work on. This is an engine that you can spend an hour or two working on it. You don't get mad. You don't throw your wrenches across the shop. It's very quick and easy to work on. Gosh, Car Wizard. There's enough space up here. I think Magic Mike could almost fit in there. Yeah, exactly. If the fans go out, they're easy to get to. The radiator, you take this plastic shroud off, you can get right to it. The water pump is right there, easy to get to. So everything on here is going to be very easy to work on. After you've been in the shop 40, 50, 60 hours in a week, however long that it is a mechanic might work in a week, the last thing that the mechanic wants to do is melt their brain on some stupidly complicated car on the weekend. It's supposed to be their time off, and occasionally their car might have an issue, a power steering pump or an alternator. This is a no-brainer on this car to replace, and you can get back to enjoying your weekend. No mechanic wants to spend their weekend under another car all over again because it's so complicated and so drawn out. So that explains why we have these frumpy old cars from an engine standpoint, but there's also a lot more if we get this thing on the lift. I'll show you underneath. Let's take a look. What you up to, Magic Mike? Oh, finishing up the wiring on this Beck Spider for Hoovy. It looks pretty complicated. Yeah, it's taken me a couple of weeks just to get to this point, and there's a few things I gotta wrap up, and then, you know, there's fuel lines and coolant hoses to run, so progress is slow but sure. They don't hand you cars in the dealerships, do they, that have no wiring or nothing and say, make it run? Definitely not projects like this. Nope. Well, we got your car on the lift. Let's go take a look underneath of it. Sounds good. Before we take a look underneath, I wanted to ask Magic Mike a question. So other than the mechanic aspects and how easy they are to work on, what is the reason you own a frumpy old grandma car? I love this car because those seats, it's the closest thing to a lazy boy I can find in a car these days, especially for 2,500 bucks. Yeah, definitely. The ride is definitely what I, we're both getting at here. After you've been in the shop all day and you've been on your knees or crawling under the dash, the last thing that you want on the ride home is some lowered little sporty car going over the pavement, going bang, 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 and jackhammering your spine every time you hit a bump. That's the last thing you want when you've been in a shop all day working on cars. So they ride really, really well. 
they're easy to work on, and they don't cost 30 grand to go buy one. It's like five. How did you get this car again? Uh, Hoovy approached me one weekend and said, hey, I picked up this car. Are you interested? Oh, and I said, absolutely. That's right. It's a Hoovy car. Yep. Well, you've been enjoying it, haven't you? Every day. Well, we're going to take a look underneath of it. I don't want to pull you away from what you were doing, so I guess you can hop back on the spider. Sounds good. All right. So we'll take a look at Magic Mike's car here and look underneath of it. The first thing I notice, really nice transmission cooler there. Heavy duty cooling. That's really nice. And as you can see, you can reach everything in here really easily. You can get to all the hood latch, the switches, wiring. Very, very easy to work on. And we'll move back a little ways. We can see the radiator and the fans. Super easy to get to. I can see a little bit of a line, a little bit of sweating there. But that's to be expected. Nobody wants to work on a car every weekend when you've been doing that all week long in the shop. So there's going to be some things that need a little addressing. But as you can see right here, here's our main pulley. Tensioner, AC compressor, which is easy to get to right here. Right above that is a power steering pump. One thing that these LT1s are known for is right in behind here is our distributor. You can see the spark plug wires right here. I'm touching them. There's also four more on the other side right here. So for some of you guys that are not familiar with the LT1 engine, you're like, what? The distributor's behind the water pump? Yes, it is. Also, let's take a look again at the water pump. Where is the serpentine belt that drives the pump? There isn't one. It's driven by the camshaft gear. The timing chain drives, basically, the water pump. So you've got oil seal and a water seal right there behind the water pump that can go bad. And when they do, it's like Niagara Falls and pours all over your distributor. It's an OptiSpark distributor, which uses an optical sensor for timing and whatnot. And they do not like to be doused in antifreeze. So that is one small pitfall about the LT1 engine. But otherwise, they're an amazing engine. They're good on fuel, very powerful and very easy to work on. Let's keep on going back. Looks like it's got a fairly new starter on it. A recent oil change. And here's a 4L60E transmission. And before we get too far back, let's check these wheels. Brakes look good. Nothing loose there. Looks like it's got brand new shocks on it. Keep that good ride going. Sway bar links are tight. Check over here. Brake pads are good. Brand new shock as well. Nothing loose there. And back to where we were. Looks like there's a little seepage here that needs to be addressed. It's a continual thing keeping these old cars running there's always something that needs a little work but the ride and the ease of working on them is so worth it there's our drive shaft new joints good check this one it's good it looks like that shock could be warrantied so there was an issue here with this shock, and he replaced it with brand new ones. And it looks like he's going to maybe get to warranty that. Say, give me another new one. Give me a bad one. So that's kind of a bummer. He tried to fix it. That happens so much in a mechanic shop. Brand new parts, brand new in the box. You put it on to take care of the problem, and the customer calls and says, hey, that part you just replaced is worse than the one that I had before. It's like, how is that possible? It was a brand new part. It doesn't matter anymore. It's just the way it is. I would say out of 20 parts, one of them is going to be faulty, brand new out of the box. It's just kind of a sad situation we're in 
I wouldn't say America, probably all over the world. So that's kind of a bummer. This one looks good. And here's our big gas tank. No leaks there, luckily. And there's our exhaust. It's even got a trailer hitch on it, amazing. You could tow a little RV with this, Mrs. Wizard. That's crazy. It's a little baby one. A little pop-up camper or something. So, not too much going on under here, just a few little small things, and but otherwise it's a good daily driver and it's been treating him very well. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So let's take a look around this really cool car. And keep in mind it's a $2,500 car, it's not a showroom museum piece. This is a daily driver that's comfortable and easy to work on. Let's go ahead and start up here and look down the side and see what we see here. I don't see any dents or scratches. I do see a side molding that's coming off, but that doesn't surprise me in this age of a car. Looks like it might have had a small fender bender here on the bumper. Nothing severe. The paint seems to be in really good shape. It has a nice derriere, Mrs. Wizard. Oh, really? Are you looking at a derriere? It looks kind of like a grandma. It's yeah. like old and frumpy looking. This side looks good over here. There's the moldings coming off a little bit. No serious damage or anything like that going on, though. I do see a little bit. Maybe something was hit here. But otherwise, really nice. I would definitely drive this every day, without question. Now let's take a peek at another one of the great reasons why he bought this car and why he drives it every single day. Look at those seats. Those are Berka loungers. Very, very comfortable. This doesn't have side bolsters. This is not an M Sport car. It is designed specifically for comfort. The dash is in good shape. The gauges, the radio, it actually looks really cool. I love the dash in these. The door panels are in good shape. As we move, look at the headliner, it's in good shape. And as we move to the back of the car, even the back seats, very, very nice in here, very comfortable. This sail panel is in really good shape, but that one over there has got a few little tears in it. Like, it looks like a, a dog clawed at it or something. I'm not sure what happened there, but for what he paid for it and what he uses it for, this car is actually in very good shape. It's very nice. So now you can see what we're talking about, the couple of three or four reasons. Why do mechanics buy these old frumpy old cars when they could buy a Porsche or they could buy a Lotus or something crazy cool? That's not what you want to drive every day, especially after you've been standing on your feet all day. These are the ticket. These kind of cars are really where it's at, if you're a mechanic. Anyone really could buy them and get the same type of advantages out of them. Isn't that what's happening to Grandma there, Car Wizard? Yeah, actually, Grandma was for sale, and there's actually someone coming on Monday with cash. Grandma will be gone soon, very likely. It's a good car, it's comfortable, but it sits most of the time, and I really like QB. I know you don't, Mrs. Wizard. It's uh, not my favorite. I love QB. It is such a cool car. Isn't it, Mrs. Wizard? It, it's so unique. It's unique, right. So when Magic Mike purchased this car from Hoovy, I knew exactly why. I knew exactly what the reasons were behind it. Exactly why I bought Grandma or any other car I've owned like that before. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on these cars, check my Amazon Affiliates page in the link below. We get a small cut and there's a lot of really cool gift ideas there. You can send the link to someone who's interested in buying you gifts, or you can ask someone what kind of gifts would you like. Check that out in the link below. You guys don't want to miss that. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I really recommend you do that now. Lots of cool projects to come. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.